Nintendo has made it a point this year to go well out of their way to crack down on ROM sites. My personal guess is they probably saw how much fun Epic Games was having suing and being sued that they were like, God damn it, we need to get in on this. And get in on this, they sure did. Back in July of 2018, they filed a lawsuit against the ROM site loveroms.com slash loveretro.co, owned by Jacob and Christiane Mathias, a married couple from Arizona. Originally, Nintendo was seeking up to $150,000 for the infringement of each copyrighted work and up to $2 million for the infringement of each of its trademarks, which according to Torrent Freak would have easily amassed $100 million in theoretical damages with more than 140 copyrighted titles and 40 trademarks on the record. The judgment didn't come anywhere near to that amount, naturally, but still reached the unusually high judgment of $12,230,000 for both direct and indirect copyright and trademark infringement. Torrent Freak explains in the article that the couple were not looking for a drawn out legal battle, which of course you wouldn't, the fuck? Instead, they engaged in settlement discussions with Nintendo, hoping to resolve the matter without too much bloodshed. They agreed to a consent judgment and a permanent injunction that will resolve all outstanding disputes. When the site was up and running, it looks like they had ROMs and emulators available for Dreamcast, Game Gear, Game Boy Color, Nintendo, which I'll assume means the NES, Nintendo DS, PlayStation, PSP, Super NES, GameCube, GBA, MAME, N64, Wii, PS2, and Sega Genesis. Under popular games, they had a bunch of GBA Pokemon games, Pokemon Yellow for Game Boy, Mario Kart 64, Super Mario World for the SNES, pretty much what you would expect to be popular on a site providing access to games that you can't easily get your hands on anymore. If you head to the website now, you'll be greeted with a message saying, Our website, loveroms.com slash loveretro.co, previously offered and performed unauthorized copies of Nintendo games in violation of Nintendo's copyrights and trademarks. LoveRealms.com slash LoveRetro.co acknowledges that it caused harm to Nintendo, its partners, and customers by offering infringing copies of Nintendo games and has agreed to seize all such activities. To access legitimate Nintendo games online, please visit www.nintendo.com for information about the Nintendo Game Store, where the majority of those games are not available, haha. <laughs> But we'll come back to that point. So like I mentioned earlier, this was settled out of court. Nobody actually expects the couple to pay this $12 million judgment. Nintendo apparently was seeking such a high judgment to scare off other ROM sites and one of them being MU Paradise after nearly two decades of running their website decided to stop offering ROMs after they heard about this Love ROMs lawsuit. And let's be real, pirating and distributing ROMs is illegal. But to the point that I'm coming back to now, a lot of the games that are on these ROM sites are not available on the Nintendo Store. Hell, a lot of them are not even available anywhere. And for the ones that are where you can actually buy physical copies of the game on eBay or in a flea market or something like that, say you do have a retro console that is still functioning. I mean, a lot of people do, but let's say that you are in that boat. Nintendo does not see any bit of that money. Those are secondhand sales. Yes, a small amount of them are being resold like with the NES Classic and being sold in a Nintendo store, but for the vast, vast 90 plus percent majority, they're not losing a single goddamn dollar on these ROMs existing in the first place. So for the judgment to reach $12 million for a collection of games that you see in publisher mega collections, you know, <laughs> like 300 games in one collections and stuff like that, they're probably not even worth a dollar to purchase in actuality. You know, a lot of them are pretty garbage, so you just play them for nostalgia purposes. So for Nintendo to be going this far out of their way to combat these ROMs from existing online, they're out of their fucking minds. Because if it is such a big deal, then why do you, Nintendo, do such a terrible job of keeping your library up to date on the Nintendo Store? And I understand that a lot of these games can't even be released by Nintendo anymore, especially video games that had to do with movies or TV shows where one company had the right to make the video game, maybe another company had the right to publish the video game, maybe one company or the other don't exist anymore. And at the end of the day, the legalities of it all prevent a lot of these video games, these classic video games from being available today, which is a case that can be made for why these ROMs should exist in the first place. And the argument that these ROMs existing prevent potential sales, Nintendo had zero problems whatsoever selling out the NES Classic on release day. It had no problems whatsoever selling out the SNES Classic. Each time they do these releases, you need to act fast, otherwise be at the risk of it selling out immediately. What I'm trying to say is the people that are willing to buy these classic games are still going to buy these classic games. 
the theoretical potential sales are not all of a sudden at risk because these ROMs are available online. These ROMs have been available for like the past 20 years. I don't know, this topic is such a divisive topic. Let's see what a few people have to say about it. Minaj00 echoes a lot of the points that I just made saying, Illegal is illegal, but Nintendo could really be a lot better with their legacy content. Nest Downloads as a service really doesn't cut it. Dev Null responds saying, I think a better solution would be to have games under a similar copyright system that books, music, and movies have, where the copyright eventually expires and the works enter the public domain. Except maybe simplify it by removing renewals and shortening the time before a work enters the public domain to 20 or 30 years after initial publication. 20 years should definitely be more than enough time to make enough money on a game and by 30 years you can argue that you've erred on the side of caution pretty heavily. The most combative response to this is from Daikon saying you don't get to decide how long a copyright is valid just based on how long you feel is more than enough time to make enough money on a game. Copyright law applies to all creative works and there is no reason it should be shorter for video games. Besides, 30 year old games are still being sold for money and people still play them. Well, to his last point I already brought that up, the, the developers and publishers make zero money, zero dollars off any secondhand sales, so eBay, flea markets and such, any kind of secondhand sales, the games are no longer in production thus not generating any more revenue for their respective companies. Except digital sales and I already brought up that the library is not up to date and Minaj basically pointed out that a Nest downloads as a service just doesn't cut it. So there that goes out the window. I personally think that 30 years is a reasonable amount of time, but I understand why some people would be touchy about the whole copyright subject, but I think it's a reasonable amount of time for it to go into public domain. Eaton Corvinus says, Obviously what they did was wrong, but 12 million in damages? Why don't you just go and kill the couple yourself, Nintendo? This is a common reaction by a lot of the people who have looked into this article from what I've read, and it, I guess they're missing the part that it was settled outside of court. The couple's not going to pay anywhere near that amount. They will have to permanently shut down that website and hand over the physical hard copies of whatever they ripped and rommed and turned them over to Nintendo, but I, I don't know if they're even going to pay any kind of, uh, maybe any kind of revenue generated by the website, but other than that, I doubt it's going to be any kind of damage. Like I said, this is what is put on paper to scare everybody else. Here's one echoing more sentiments that I made earlier on in the video. It's obviously strictly speaking illegal to offer Nintendo ROMs for free download. However, considering Nintendo's reluctance to provide an official and legal means to obtain and play many of these ROMs, I struggle to feel too bad for Nintendo. The Switch has been out for 18 months now and there's still only a handful of NES games available to their online service subscribers. Nintendo are sitting on a gold mine but would rather pursue and punish people offering others a chance to replay those classic games than provide people the means to pay Nintendo themselves for them. Baffling. I agree it is pretty goddamn baffling. I mean how are we supposed to give you Nintendo money if you're not giving us the means to? Butchering this name, I'm sure, Dare Toll Emil says, To be fair, for 99% of games, Nintendo have no say in whether they are available or not. That's up to the publishers who release the games, not Nintendo. As far as Nintendo published titles are concerned, there are actually quite a lot of them available in various forms. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of emulation, especially when looking at the preservation aspect of it, but I honestly can't blame Nintendo. Even if they did not sell any of their old games digitally, they are still in the right. Which is a completely valid response and that's the problem. When it comes down to this, at the end of the day, it's wrong, right? Because it's illegal. But it's just such a gray area that it creates this divide. Where I stand at the end of the day is that Nintendo could use their resources much better than pursuing things like this. It's just so goddamn petty to me. I also feel that really old classic video games should just be readily available to the public. I'm not saying that companies should lose their copyrights altogether, like I'm not saying that Nintendo should lose the right to Mario for example because Donkey Kong came out in the early 80s. I am saying though that people should be readily allowed to play Donkey Kong because it came out in the early 80s. I don't know, I could go on and on about this topic, it's just, it's such a complicated subject. So instead, I'm going to pass it off to you guys. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Where do you stand on this argument? Are you for emulation and ROMs? Are you against it? Did you enjoy this video? Hit that like button if you did and share this video with whoever you want to share it with. If you're new around here, subscribe and notifications to be notified about all upcoming videos. I do these gaming news and discussion videos at least once a week, so make sure to subscribe and ring that bell to stay on top of that. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Oh,